The greatest love of my life is writing. I've been journaling for over 15 years, and every time I pick up my notebook, I learn and heal something that I wasn't aware of before. I write letters to my inner voice, my intuition. I have conversations with God. I ask questions and I wait for answers. Journaling has also given me self-confidence when I needed it most. It's kept me company in the loneliest of times and it's brought me a healthy dose of humility when I needed grounding. The simple act of picking up a pen and using your hands to move thought and emotion out of your body and onto the page is immensely healing. Journaling is a form of acknowledgement. It's a method of expressing yourself, owning what you believe, owning what you think, and owning your emotions. Writing is my therapy. It is the way that I process emotions and trauma and pain and dreams and hopes and fears. It's the way I process everything in my life. You may be wondering if I use journal prompts. And after meditation, I do. I ask myself questions based on areas in my life where I need guidance. For example, what areas in my life can I trust myself more? Where can I practice self-acceptance and self-love? Where do I need to give myself compassion and grace? How can I give generously to others? How can I create selflessly for other people? And the most frequently used one, what feels like the most fun thing that I could be doing today? But most of my journaling is a stream of consciousness. I observe the world and the people around me, the animals, nature mostly, and I record what I see. One of my biggest simple joys in life is just sitting in a cafe with a cup of hot chocolate and my notebook and my favorite silky click pen and just watching the world around me. I'm very inspired by the poetry and writing of Patti Smith. I write about how things challenge me and help me grow. I write about small, simple moments in my daily life or in my travels, moments that have impacted me, conversations with people that have helped me see the world a little bit differently. Once that present moment is gone, once that singular moment of expressing your emotions on paper is over, there's really no point in going back to read it. Today, I don't reread my journals. I don't go back in time because a lot of my childhood was painful. A lot of the experiences I went through in high school with all my emotions, it's not worth re reliving. And so I don't like to reread my journals. And I like to be here in the present at 26 years old. And I don't like to look back because it's not in the now. And my future is created from this present moment, not from 10 years ago. And I encourage everyone, no matter how old you are, to pick up a journal and to start writing. Start writing your thoughts, your dreams, your fears, what you're afraid of, your anxieties, the things that keep you up late at night. Write to-do lists and pro-con lists and take little Polaroids and pictures and fill your journals with your memories. Hey! All right, let's move all of these bad boys. Okay. Oh my gosh, that's exhausting. Now we gotta move all these. All these lyrics, guys. Check out all these lyrics of songs and stuff. How funny is this? Oh my gosh, it's crazy. A lot of Aerosmith. <laughs> As you can see, I've been journaling for most of my life. I remember when I was eight years old, I would sit 
on the curb on the, of the sidewalk near my house in my neighborhood in Imperial Beach, California. And I remember writing as an eight-year-old girl all the observations that I saw in my neighborhood. And then I very quickly wanted to become Harriet the Spy, um, <laughs> the 1999 Nickelodeon film. And I remember really connecting with that character and finally finding someone near my own age that loved writing as much as I do. And I started writing and this, this was my first one. I had other little ones that I started with when I really first started journaling, but this was like the first official journal. This is the one that really got me started on my path to writing. How I've always approached journaling is very simple. When I started out as a kid and a teenager, I would write about my day. I would write about things that happened today, conversations that were had, things that people said. But as I got older into my teens and then in my early 20s, I started writing about my dreams and my hopes and my fears. And when I was a teenager, I did something pretty wild. And I can't believe that I knew how to do this back then, but I would write about things that I wanted in the present tense as if I already had it. And I would write about how I felt having those things and experiencing those life experiences. You can see like I would make vision boards in my journals and I would do this throughout my journals. I would cut out pictures or print pictures from Google Images or Pinterest and I would paste them and put pictures of things that I wanted. I have like flowers, New York City, a role that I wanted to play, writing, journaling, Audrey Hepburn, um, um, backpack Europe 2016, travel, like these are the things, these were my dreams when I was 16 and I would just cut and paste images and that way I would always be able to see them every single day when I pulled out my day planner or pulled out my journal. I would just always be reminded of what my dreams were and it's so funny because so many of these things I've done so many of these things I've done, like, and some of these things are, are things that I still connect with today, like the bird and the flowers and traveling and nature camping, like so much of this, it still resonates with me now at 26 years old and I made these over 10 years ago. I wrote down about a year before I met my husband, I wrote down a list of every specific quality that I wanted in my future partner. Um, I was, <laughs> I wrote it down very specifically, like to the T and I wrote, I have this person, this person came into my life, like this person has these traits, this person makes me feel this way. And it's just a laundry list of things that I wanted in a partner. And let me tell you guys, all of it came true a year later. And this might seem really out there for some of you, but if you believe in reincarnation, if you believe that you have a soul and you're not just a physical body, but you're something more energetic and soul connected than, than just your physical host, there's an amazing book that I think you would really like. It's um, Journey of Souls by Michael Newton. And in this book, Michael talks about how our souls before we come down to earth, before we incarnate in this physical body and we have these physical experiences, we pick certain objects to help remind our human self of our purpose and what we're here on earth to do. I believe every single one of us has a plan and a purpose and a mission. And a lot of what our mission and our purpose is, is learning lessons in life lessons that go beyond the physical but are a lot much deeper and richer but michael newton talks about how before we incarnate in this physical body to have these physical experiences we pick certain objects certain people certain visuals to notice them when we're in our human body so that we can be reminded and remember why we came here on earth why we came here at this specific time what mission we have what purpose we are here to fulfill and i believe that one of my totems or my tokens the little things that i was supposed to notice in order to get started on my own journey was a journal it was a journal when i was seven or eight years old, I went to a friend's house and her older sister had a journal just like this sitting on her desk. And I remember seeing that and it felt like the world stopped. It felt like time stood still. 
and I knew I had to pick one of these up that day. I knew I had to ask my mom to drive me to CVS to get one of these composition notebooks, and that night I made one. This was the one I made. Took pictures out of, you know, all the kids' magazines I had back then, and I would just put pictures and soul, hot, perfect, celebrity, Hollywood, preppy, celeb. Like, you could see where my priorities were at this age. <laughs> Clearly I had some other values. I encourage anyone of any age to start journaling. Start physically moving your hands and physicalizing your emotions and your thoughts and your beliefs and put it down on paper. It can't hurt. It can't hurt. It's for you, and it's private, and it's personal, and there's something sacred and special about journaling. And I'm so glad that I started doing it at such an, a young age that I have all these journals. I wanted to share with you guys my journaling experience, what my life has been like because of journals. And I can tell you I would not be the resilient, strong, and optimistic person that I am naturally today if it weren't for journaling. Journaling has helped me process my emotions. And for anyone who is a very emotional person, journaling is therapy and your notebook is your therapist. So whatever age you are, pick up a pen and paper, get your thoughts and emotions out there, physically move your hands and pour the words on the page because there's nothing like it. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Very spontaneous, I decided to film this today since I'm back in my hometown of Oceanside and I have all these journals here. But if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps to support my channel and the continued growth of Simple Joys. And leave me a comment down below if, if you also love journaling. Did you grow up as a kid loving journaling or do you want to get started writing today? Tell me below, I'd love to hear from you. Have a magical day, my friends. I'm sending you a big hug and lots of butterflies. Bye.